This is the my library, 2430 Pacific Avenue in San Francisco. This evening is late January 1991. And we're in the library of Old Book of Hawaii. The first books about Hawaii related the events of Captain Cook's visit to Hawaii. The earliest of the regular accounts appeared in Germany, in the German language, written by a sailor named Zimmermann. Here is a copy of the book that was printed in Mannheim. It exists in both a German and a French edition. Here is a French edition. over here in this section of the library, which consists of many early voyages. Here is an edition of the French translation of 1786. Yeah. Among the other early accounts of the death of Cook, little pamphlet printed in Sweden in 1781. It's an extremely rare pamphlet. It exists here in the collection in a very beautiful condition. In its original wrappers in a case made specially for this little pamphlet. This case is lined with silk. French water silk. The first of the English accounts was printed surreptitiously and anonymously by Lieutenant Rickman, who sailed with Cook. Here is an example of Rickman's voyage, account of the Cook voyage, in the original boards, the first edition, which was printed in London in 1781. Here is a plate showing the death of Cook. Rickman account exists in the collection in several editions, perhaps the most interesting of which is an edition printed in Philadelphia in 1783. This is an extremely rare example of an early Cook imprint in the United States. It was printed in two parts in Philadelphia in 1783. We've located the announcements in the current newspapers of 1783 when the book was actually published. Another account printed in the United States, the only one by an American, is this little account done by John Ledger, who sailed with Cook. This was printed in Hartford in the same year as the other one, 1783. Here we will see some other accounts of the Cook Voyage. Including that of Lieutenant Ellis. This was printed in London in 1782. volumes bound in contemporary cast. Here is an abridged edition, London 1784. This is an abridgment of the first official account of Cook's voyage. This is in four volumes. The official account is over here. This is a quarto edition, 1784. It took the Admiralty four years from the return of Cook's voyage, Cook's ships, to publish the official account in 1784. This publication earned 
substantial royalties for Mrs. Cook, the navigator's widow. Perhaps interesting and rarest of the accounts of the death of Cook in this little pamphlet by David Samuel. Printed in London, 1786. Here is a modern binding. Maybe early 20th century. Done by Elizabeth Greenhill, a well-known woman book binder in England, early in the century. This volume was part of the famous Phillips collection came on the market at auction a few years ago. Here are some of the other quarto early voyages. That was Portlock, Dixon and Mears, famous voyage of Vancouver. Here is a German edition printed in St. Petersburg of the first Russian circumnavigation and uh, Admiral von Bugenstein. Here is an account of the same Russian voyage by a German scientist named Langsdorff. Here is the original German edition printed in Frankfurt am Main in 1812. This contains the first printed engraving of San Francisco. Here is another account of the same voyage by Vivianski, the commander of one of the two ships. Here is the English translation of Kutz, uh, uh, the Klugenstein account, translation done by Admiral von Klugen, and rare editions of the work of Captain Cook. Among the more intriguing pieces that were issued after the return of Cook's ships uh, is this little pamphlet, The Death of Captain Cook a grand serial pantomimic ballet in three acts. This is printed in London in 1789. Not very many copies are known. There is a French edition which precedes this by, I believe, three years. It's an example of the interest that Cook's voyage had, uh, all three of them, uh, back in the old country. There has been, from the 18th century, published almost annually an almanac of European royalty called the Almanac de Gotha, printed originally in the town of Gotha, part of the Duchy of Saxe-Coburg Gotha, where Queen Victoria's husband, Prince Albert, came from. Here is a little portfolio with the edition of 1791. It lists all the members of reigning families in Europe at that time. It has a few sets of plates in the front. Among the plates, interest to us, the plate showing the death of Captain Cook here, and here is showing Captain Cook being received by King George and Queen Charlotte of Great Britain. This is an extremely scarce little thing and was found last year at the Antiquarian Book Fair in Los Angeles. One of the aspects of the collection in the early voyage section is the publication of the official account of a voyage and also accounts in uh, different translations, subsidiary accounts by other officers, other men, uh, manuscripts connecting the voyage, related to the voyage. One of the most interesting for Hawaii, of course, is that of Vancouver. Here, in the three volumes, the official edition of Vancouver, there's a large atlas also, which is in the collection over here on my left. Many years ago, when I was a teenager, I was offered the copy that had belonged to King George III, been sold from his library when he needed money, about 1800. 
very beautiful copy in red morocco with gold tooling. And the dealer offered it to me. I said, but I have a issue of Vancouver, but do I need another one for it? Well, I was very young. Among the very rare editions of Vancouver in the collection is this Swedish edition of 1797, which is printed the same year as the official account. This was translated into Swedish by the famous scientist Anders Sparman, who himself sailed with Cook on an earlier voyage. One of the most important voyages for Hawaii is the voyage of Otto von Kotzebue. This was the second Russian circumnavigation led by von Kotzebue, who was a Baltic German. The uh, official accounts were published simultaneously in both German and Russian, in Weimar and in St. Petersburg. The Weimar edition of 1821 is shown here in the finest of three published states. It is shown here in original boards, just the way it came from the printer with the original label. Published by the brothers Hoffman in Weimar and dedicated to uh, His Majesty Alexander I, Emperor of all the Russias. The Emperor presented a copy of this to his sister, the Grand Duchess of Sachsen Weimar, Eisenach, in beautiful red Morocco hand tooled, the Atlas that edition is in the collection and one of the rarest because it shows the first printing of a map of the city of Honolulu. This is where the interesting in the collection is not this particular volume, which is in very beautiful shape, but a letter concerning the portrait, along with Kotzebue, with the Russian artist Louis Choris, and a French emigre scientist by the name of Adelbert von Chamiso. Horis did the portrait of Kamehameha, he painted it, and uh, gave the original to Adalbert von Chamiso, his uh, companion on the voyage. Here is a letter, manuscript letter by Chamiso to the publisher of this book, the Brothers Hoffman, written in 1821 in German, in which in he speaks about the portrait. In which he describes the portrait of Kamehameha as being a particularly fine likeness, and he is very pleased to have it. In the collection, there's also an autographed letter of the artist, Louis Choris, or Choris, Choris in French. This is addressed to a gentleman in Brussels. It's written from Paris in 1827, about 10 years after the voyage, and before he embarks on an expedition to Mexico, where he is set upon, presumably by robbers, and is murdered. Chamiso is known for writing the first scientific study of the Hawaiian language. 
here is the copy in German, which was published in the Proceedings of the Royal Academy of Sciences in Berlin, über die Hawaiische Sprache, concerning the Hawaiian language. This copy came from the Austrian Imperial Naval Library. What the guru is particularly interesting for Hawaii, not only for the drawings, which are very beautiful, but for the point of view of someone who visited the islands both with the first Russian circumnavigation and the captains Lysiansky and Admiral von Kuzenstern, when he was in command of his own expedition, about 1816, and when he was in command of the second expedition. Here is an account of the uh, second Kotzebue expedition in a very, very beautiful binding. This is the original German published in Weimar and simultaneously in St. Petersburg in 1830. One of the interesting items of Hawaiian interest is a portrait of Namahana, Queen Namahana, the sister of Queen Kahumanu. Another Russian expedition, about the same time as the first Kotzebue expedition, is that of Golovin, who arrived the Kamchatka with an artist named Tikhanov who was known for a portrait of Kamehameha sitting at a table with a little shot glass. Here is a very rare edition printed in St. Petersburg in the original Russian of Golovnin's uh, account. Here is a later printing of the works of Golovnin also in Russian, 1864. It wasn't until a few years ago that an English translation appeared, published by the University of Hawaii Press and the Hawaiian Historical Society, translated by Professor Ella Wiswell, University of Hawaii Language Department. Here are editions from the first Russian circumnavigation, that of Langsdorff, here is the St. Petersburg German edition uh, by Kruzenstern. Here is the English edition of Kruzenstern, which he himself translated. Here is the English edition of the account by Elisiansky, the co-commander. And here is an extremely rare book in Russian by Shemelin, who traveled with the expedition as secretary for the Russian-American company. This has only recently been translated by Professor Barrett. Here is a, a Russian edition of the first Kotzebue expedition. I found this in the House of Books in Moscow 1974. Here is an American edition of Langstorff's account of the Kruzenstern expedition, printed in Carlisle, Pennsylvania in 1817. The simple binding, typography is simple, somewhat primitive but it is the first American edition. Over here, we have another small German edition of the Kruzenstern in three volumes. Here are the other two.
regular trade edition in German of the second voyage. Here are the Namahana picture, but it's not colored, as it is in the fine edition. Here is the English translation in three volumes of the account of the first Kotzebue expedition. Here is a French edition of the Kluzenstern. Here is a very beautiful account in original boards in English translation of the second Kotzebue voyage. Here is the Dutch account of the first Kotzebue. And here is a very rare Swedish edition. Over here, we have a Swedish account translation of the Kruzenstern. And over here, we have juvenile accounts of the first and second Kotzebue expeditions and a German account of Langsdorf for juveniles. Rather interesting, there are several juvenile editions of early voyages in the collection. And the better known ones are that of La Perouse. One of the most interesting of the 19th century voyages around the world was the principal, the first United States expedition, called the United States Exploring Expedition, under the command of Lieutenant Charles Wilkes, 1838 to 1842. He spent some time in Hawaii, and his, the work of the scientists accompanying him Hawaiian study is extremely significant. The United States government, through Congress, sponsored the publication of a narrative of the voyage and several scientific works. The works got uh, delayed, partly due to money, partly due to the recalcitrance or lassitude of the scientists involved, and not all of the scientific volumes running originally to 24 were actually published. There is, other, outside the Library of Congress, there is only one complete set of works, and that is in the Bishop Museum in Honolulu. This collection has several of the atlases and a number of the scientific texts. Congress published 100 copies of each of the volume. Several of them were destroyed in part. Some of the missing volumes were replaced and some of them never were. The volumes were used as gifts to foreign governments and to state libraries. The Bishop Museum acquired the collection originally given to the Hawaiian government and the first director of the Bishop Museum made it a point to secure the missing volumes from his scientific friends in New England up to Hawaii, so that's said it's complete for that reason. Here is the official publication, one of a hundred, with the publisher shown in the United States of America, the narrative to account. Here is Hale's Ethnography and Philology, the second account, the scientific basis of the Hawaiian language after the account of uh, the Shamiso, which I showed earlier. Here is Graves Botany. Here is Pickering's the Race. Yeah. Here is a copy of Pickering's Races of Man, important for Hawaiian studies because it has a portrait of David Marlowe, and the second Mrs. John E. Here are geographical distributions of animals and plants. Here is a copy of Cass uh, the Mammalogy and Ornithology by Cassie. Over here. 
We have several other accounts of the Welks expedition, including the only foreign language edition I know of, which is the German edition, put in Stuttgart in Tübingen in 1848. Here is a preliminary account by the great geologist Dana, pinned in New Haven in 1843, the year after the voyage returned to the United States. Here is a very rare little pamphlet containing the sermon uh, for Lieutenant Underwood and Midshipman Henry of the United States Navy, who died while on the exploring expedition. This pamphlet was printed in Honolulu at the Mission Press in 1840. The collection is very rich in the extracts from the congressional record concerning the uh, expedition, including a message from the president from 1838, transmitting copies of letters, documents, and communications in relation to the delay in the saving of the exploring expedition. From a Hawaiian point of view, one of the most interesting items in the collection is a letter from Governor Kuanaua, governor of the island of Oahu, to Commander Welks. It's written November 25th, 1841, Papu Honolulu. Here is this letter from Governor Kekuanaua of Oahu to Commander Wilkes. Written Papu Honolulu, the Fort of Honolulu, November 25th, 1841. Aloha e Wilkes. Keli ona manua imi aina. Some men under Captain Wilkes' command had been convicted uh, before Governor Kekoanawa. The commander asked for the rehearing, and the governor is graciously pleased to grant a rehearing uh, the following morning at 10 o'clock. The details of the trial and the incident are set forth by Wilkes himself in the narrative of the expedition. Interesting letter, not only uh, because uh, there's a governor's signature and it's addressed to Commander Wilk, but because the letter is entirely in Hawaii, I assume that uh, Wilk would understand it, we would have it translated. The translation is both the companies of the letter. We've talked of the Russian voyages, we've talked something the English voyages, one of the most interesting voyages in the Pacific was those of the French. The first French vessel come to, come to Hawaii was commanded by the Pont de la Cahouse. He visited Maui very briefly. If he landed at all, it was only for a few hours to trade. Here is the original edition of the French La Perouse. There are several English editions, and there is an early American edition over here. This is an Edinburgh edition of 1798. There's an American edition, which is a translation of this. And here it's here. Printed in Boston for Joseph Bumstead. 1801. There were half a dozen important French voyages in the 19th century into the Pacific. They had a Fresine, a Vaillant, and Du Petit Tuar stopped in Hawaii. The two voyages of Dumont Puville and the voyage of Du Perret did not. As a result of each of the voyage, a very beautiful set of volumes produced, containing atlases for several very beautiful plates. The 
collection has the account of the three, the six, who stopped in Hawaii. In Du Petit Duar, Le Vaillant, and that of Clement de Précinet. One of the interesting items in the voyage is a copy of a journal of a residence in the Sandwich Islands by Charles Stewart with notes by William Ellis. This is in London, 1828. It in itself is not a rare book. What makes this particularly interesting is this was a copy of uh, Captain de Freycinet and is annotated in French in his own hand. That's for example here, and here, and here. Well, this is what Freycinet has to say about Stuart's text. It's interesting because Stuart was an American uh, missionary. Um, Freycinet was a, uh, was a uh, French officer. Their will views were understandably somewhat different. One of the rather interesting accounts of the Freycinet voyage is this. Count a late printing, 1927, the Journal of Madame Rose de Source de Freycinet. Uh, Madame de Freycinet stowed away on the ship, and uh, when the ship reached Gibraltar, she came on deck. I believe the men were quite delighted to have a, a captain's uh, consort along provide a element of feminine grace in the long voyage. It, uh, the journal had remained unpublished until 1927. Here are some of the other early voyages. This six volume green set in original uh, binding is that of uh, Laplace, who was here in the 1830s. It plays Franchere. This is a very rare Montreal imprint from 1820. In a binding uh, sensitive of the period, Montreal, 1820. One of the very rarest of the early French accounts is this little pamphlet done by Roman Catholic missionaries on the way to the northwest, Mission de la Colombie, by Jean Baptiste Bolduc. Very few of these were printed, and all but 25 were destroyed in a fire. Has a very interesting account of Honolulu in the very early 1840s. Another interesting account is that of Rockfrey, which is in the collection in both the original French and the English edition. travelers, Americans, who visited Hawaii in early days and what they found. Among the other great strengths of the collection is the record of how the outside world was communicated to the Hawaiians, the other side of the coin, as it were. When the missionaries arrived in 1820, they took around the horn from Boston with them in old ramage and press. This was put into service, and the first uh, Hawaiian printing was struck January 7, 1822. The broadside, the 
Frank was joined by the Prime Minister Kalani Moku in the presence of other high chiefs, uh, Robin Bingham, Elisha Loomis, a printer, and some New England gentlemen, including uh, James Honeywell, who preserved a copy of this, deposited it in the archives of the American Board of Commissioners for Foreign Missions in Boston. This copy has since disappeared. Someday, someone will open a drawer and there will be. No other copy is known to survive in the very first printing. It took uh, several years to reduce the Hawaiian language to a uh, agreed upon set of orthography, of spelling rules, grammar. But the most important of the translations into Hawaiian of wisdom from the outside world is obviously the Bible. The Bible was translated uh, various books at several times in the late 1820s. The first edition of the Hawaiian Bible, a complete edition, was done in the mid-1830s. Here is a very fine copy of these two volumes. Are the Old Testament and this volume uh, is with the New Testament. Sometimes this is all bound with one very thick volume. I chose to have my copy uh, bound in three parts. It's easy to handle, it's easy to store, and it's a good uh, deal better for preservation of the spine. Here is an example. printing of the first Bible. Printer Elisha Loomis returned from New England, Western New York, to Rochester, and uh, uh, there printed three books of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and John, in 1828. The book of Luke had been printed in Honolulu the year before, in 1827. Loomis took with him a Hawaiian apprentice printer by the name of Kapuli, who helped him print the Bible, and then has disappeared from the pages of history. We don't know what happened to him. He may have stayed on in, within the United States and lived a long and useful life, I hope so. I said that the Bible is the most important of the early printing. The finest example of Hawaiian printing is, in fact, the Bible. This is a case made for what is the finest example of Hawaiian printing, the large paper edition of the Hawaiian Bible in 1843 was printed to be used in the lecterns of the churches by the uh, ministers. You can see here the deep bite of the type onto the page. There was also an edition, uh, copies of which exist, uh, several number, of the same, same printing but on smaller paper. What is important about this volume is its uh, perfect condition, its original binding done uh, at the Mission Printing House with the gold tooling using the tool that Diamond brought with him from uh, New England. What is particularly important about this com copy also is that it was a presentation copy to Admiral Thomas from the American missionaries in gratitude for his restoration of Hawaiian sovereignty. This volume may well be called the Independence Bible. It commemorates restoration of Hawaiian independence 
after the takeover by the British under Lord George Paulet, the restoration by Admiral Thomas, 31st of July, 1843, a date which used to be celebrated as Hawaiian Independence Day. This Bible remained in the possession of the family of Admiral Thomas and descended to his great-grandnephew, a book dealer in San Francisco by the name of David McGee. Mr. McGee was dying of cancer. Uh, he sold it, and I acquired it for the collection. So he put it back in the box, which has been made specially to house what is not only a beautiful example of Hawaiian printing, the finest example, but an important historical artifact. A second copy of the large paper edition of the Hawaiian Bible, belonging to Mrs. Afong, is also in the collection. The binding is in red leather as opposed to brown. The tooling is more elaborate, the gold tooling, the front and back. the same fine bite. Mrs. Afang, you may recall, was Julia Fairweather, half Hawaiian, half American, who married a Chinese Mandarin, a merchant by the name of Chan Afang, whose descendants play a prominent role in Hawaii even today. The first in 1822, shortly after the broadside, was a little spelling book. Here is an 1822 edition, 16 pages. The little spelling book as used by children of the time, and it was the first printing used to teach Hawaiian to read. What may be called the first real book, this is more a pamphlet than a book, was the hymnal, prepared the next year in 1823, translations by Hiram Bingham and William Ellis. Hiram Bingham was the leader of the American missionary, the Calvinist from Boston. William Ellis was a London missionary who had gone to Tahiti and stopped in Hawaii on the way back to England to uh, help the American missionaries to translate into Hawaiian, a language similar to Tahitian. This is the 1823 hymnal in a contemporary tapa binding. Notes the bright yellow, the red, pink, and the black tapa. This is the original binding. This is a copy that belonged to William Ellis. Here is an inscription several lines in his own hand, dated at Naismith, his home when he returned to England, 1829. This is the first real book printed in Hawaii. And this is the finest copy. Very few uh, copies of Tapa bindings are known. There are copies where uh, wrappers paper wrapper around uh, the Hawaiian language text is uh, tapa, but this is a regular binding spine. The spines are getting weak now, it's 1822, 1823, a long time ago. Here is in its own case. This uh, belonged to Thomas Treatis, the famous collector of Americana, and was one of his very fine collection of major Hawaiian language prints. To 
uh, most interested in producing religious tracts as soon as they reduce the language to writing. Here is a collection, several of them. There's chapters from the book of Acts, Psalms, Early. Psalm 1829, Psalms 1830. The interesting thing about this also is the fact that the bindings have been tortoiseshell. Several tortoiseshell bindings do survive. I once believed they were made for the elite. Possibly, possibly not. This too, this collection of the three collections of early religious tracts in Hawaiian, uh, was also in these three collections. Here is another tortoiseshell binding. These are in their own case, they're fragile. The bindings are fairly, fairly strong, though. To the Book of Hymns of 1828. We've seen some fine copies of bindings. This is probably the most elaborate, the most beautiful of the bindings done by the Mission Binder. prepared for G.B. Rao, one of the missionaries. You can see the tooling, the same tools we used as for the large paper edition, the Admiral Thomas Bible, and the Mrs. Alfama Bible. A great deal of early printing was done in Hawaiian, in Hawaii, in the first 20 years, from 1822 to 1842, the missionaries printed 100 million pieces of paper. I find that fact absolutely astounding. It was all done by hand labor, much of it done by the native Hawaiians themselves. They continued to print a great deal of religious books, there were books, textbooks, geometry, textbooks on algebra, Latin textbooks, English language textbooks. Interesting. In my opinion, charming is the anatomy book. The text was printed in Honolulu, 1838. The translation of a New England anatomy book by Judd, the American missionary. What I find interesting about it, of the 16 plates, anatomical plates, engraved by the student with Lahaina Luna. This is among the finest examples of their very delicate craftsmanship. The book almost disappeared. Very few copies survive. One of the interesting plates here is of a kneading skeleton. Comments were made that, well, since it was a book by a missionary, he shown in prayer. Well, this is in the original New England text. It was not done by a missionary. I think the skeleton is shown kneeling because the artist was able to get him on, get the skeleton on one page. I shouldn't say him or her, or I can't tell which is which. These were done in the hydro. Another example of the Engraving done by the students under the tutelage of Lauren Andrews at Lahaina Luka Seminary. The 
the 1830s and 40s with this atlas. This little hand atlas, a small one. We should see a large one. Plates were all engraved at the high school. They were lettered and colored. There are two copies, slightly different, variant editions. The variant, uh, the variant edition is something near and dear to the heart of book collectors. In the back of the book is a, last, is a section on questions. Books were important because of the influence that they had upon Hawaiian society. Among the most important, I think, is the first collection of Hawaiian laws. While broadside this laws were printed early, this is the first collection. of Hawaiian laws. He would be considered the first Hawaiian criminal code. The Olelo no Nakanovai of the Hawaii Paihain, not Kawike Auli, really. Promulgated by the king, Kawike Auli, the man of the third. Exists in two states. This is a 15 page state, the first one in 1834. of this is not quite so fine as the first. The first, we suspect, but we don't know, may have been brought back to the United States by Commander Wilkes when he visited Hawaii in the period 18, uh, late 1830s, 1840. It was in the Smithsonian Institution, it was later transferred about the turn of the century to the Library of Congress duplicate and was deaccessioned uh, I fired at the time of the deaccession of the Library of Congress. This is probably why the condition was so good. The Hawaiian book that stayed in Hawaii generally did not survive, and if they did, survived almost always in very poor condition. For a Hawaiian book to survive it was almost necessary and imperative that it be sent out of the Among the important books, the first book of common prayer, translated by Kamehameha IV. Here's a binding. This was done when Kamehameha IV and Queen Emma established the English church, the Hawaiian Reformed Catholic Church of St. Andrew in Honolulu. This was printed in 1862. This is a presentation copy from the king to the Earl of Bradmore, a border uh, a border earl. The Right Honorable the Earl of Bradmore, with the kindness regards of the translator Kamehameha, dated Honolulu, August 1863, just three months before he died. 
the king composed the preface to the book, the preface here in, which is in Hawaii. When Queen Emma went to raise money for the English church in England, in 1865-66, a translation was done, and copies were printed in English. There are copies of both. language introduction to the Hawaiian Book of Common Prayer. Philadelphia printing is known, I believe, only in this copy. I don't know if another copy. There are other copies of the London edition of the English translation of the Book of Common Prayer. A book which is very important also for Hawaii, which is very scarce in the first edition. But in San Francisco, 1855, it was translated by George Buchanan, a well-known Mormon missionary at which town in Hawaii. This is very rare. This date is to be preserved for two reasons. The Hawaiians who read the book, read them to pieces, like I said earlier, the climate is not favorable to all books. Also, very few copies were distributed before most of the printing was consumed in the fire in the uh, modern warehouse. Magna Carta. This is the edition of 1840. Kumu Kanavai. This was the, might be considered the first Hawaiian civil code or Bill of Rights. It precedes by a few months the promulgation of the first Hawaiian constitution in the collection also in both the English and Hawaiian editions. These are the artifacts that describe the making of Hawaii into a modern state. There are laws concerning the schools, Quarantine laws of 1839 in English, the rest of these are all Hawaiian. Among the charming artifacts in this period is the badge of the Cold Water Army, Pu Ali Inuvai. Here it is in the frame, 1943. Beautiful copy. Preserved here. 
last quite a while. And the date is March 15th, 1842. And uh, someone who had taken the temporary pledge and had joined the Cold Water Army would pin this to his shirt or her blouse or dress and wear it uh, proudly. early Hawaiian language manuscripts, the Book of Chants, that had belonged to Prince of Likiliki, Glakau's sister. I had it rebound. Here is the original cover, the Book in Mele, in Naliki. Aina Haugula, June 17, 1881. The first chant Kali O Kamanawa, chant of Kamanawa. There are 43 pages of chants, manuscript chants, all in Hawaiian. showed a small atlas a few minutes ago. This is a large size atlas with all the plates engraved flying over them. This is the map of the world. Sometimes the name of the engraver is given. map of Hawaii. This was engraved by Kepahoni, a Hawaiian who shipped out, gone around Cape Horn, and had taken the name Kepahoni in commemoration of that spectacular event in his life. This copy is in fine condition and it left the islands. This is an atlas used in the schools of the Hawaiian Islands engraving and printing done by natives. Will Mr. Kimball accept this from his little friend Justice Lee Emerson, the child of a uh, missionary, for the presentation to a friend. And indeed, it was the first newspaper printed in what is now the United States, west of the Rocky Mountains. It's called Kalama Hawaii. It was printed at the seminary at Lahaina Luna in 1834. It's a complete run, volume one. The first issue, volume one, number one, was dated February 14, 1834. It's particularly interesting are the woodcuts of animals. Here is the elepani. Each issue had a woodcut of an animal. This is the rhinoceros. This is the camelo. This is how the Hawaiians learned about these exotic creatures from the outside world. Paper contains shipping news, obituaries, laws, poems. Here is the buffalo. The woodcuts were engraved by 
missionary doctor, Alonzo Chapin, based upon drawings done by his wife, he is a, a surgical tool to do the engravings on woodcuts. These are different from the engravings the students did, because they were done on copper, copper plate engraving. These were woodcut engravings. This ran until the end of 1834, when it was succeeded by paper printed in Honolulu instead of Lahaina. That was called Kikumu Hawaii, the Hawaiian teacher. Here is a copy of the first three volumes, ran for four years. Three of them are in the collection. Kikumu Hawaii. This copy at one time belonged to the King of Denmark, was deaccessioned and acquired by the Royal University in Stockholm. The Royal University of Stockholm deaccessioned it. It came on the market a few years ago. Sometimes things go into libraries, even university libraries, that don't always do. This is the Bible Atlas, printed in Lahaina Luna in 1842. Printed in, in Hawaiian. earlier, the geography book that was printed in La Haina Luna. This is an example of the Anahonua. I have logarithm tables in the back, tables of latitude and longitude. Captain Park from Bowditch of American Practical Navigator. Quick and grave by Kalama. These were printed. Uh, the report, this particular one, the report of the Minister of the Interior uh, to the Hawaiian Legislature, 1845. Collection, reports of the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Minister of the Interior, Minister of Finance, Attorney General, treaties, correspondence with France in 1848. Official correspondence with the Chevalier Guillon, Council of France, relating to charges brought by him against the Haiti Esquire, Director General of Customs, etc., etc. Now, all of 
the government reports between the beginning of the annual reports by government departments to the legislature. This is a very beautiful collection in four volumes, six volumes, bound in four, however I should say. With the crown of the kingdom here, London binding, I think, presentation copy from Wiley himself, the Minister of Foreign Affairs in Honolulu, to Alfred Blanche, Esquire, Council of State, etc., etc., in London. Note the green silk marae and papers. Go up to the right. Here is the first novel printed in Hawaiian. This is a romance of Laia Ikavai, an English translation by Marcel Beckwith. Basak, whose father, I believe, is in the president of Punahou, is in the collection, as well as a recent translation by a Russian scholar in the Russian language. This is an example of the scientific work that was done in Hanover in 1839, circular of the Sandwich Island Institute continuing directions for the pre preparation and preservation of objects of natural history, compiled by order of the Board of Managers. Interesting because it has several engravings. How to mount a butterfly. Insect. I think there may be one or two other copies. The dealer from whom I bought this, that there was, this was the only recorded copy, but I think there were two other copies. In any case, yes. One of the interesting documents here is a phrase book in three languages. This is the 1898 edition, this is the 1890 edition, the, the first, first, second edition. San Kuku Kwaiwa, printed in Japan in 1890, and is a Hawaiian, English, Japanese phrase book. It is used by the Japanese and Britain of Hawaii to teach them both English and Hawaiian. That gives them word lists, times and seasons, words like scholar, book, desk, school, teacher, relations. Gives them verbs like weigh, mix, melt, shake, keep, wear, leak, flow, pour, empty. Phrases, what do you want, where did you come from, where are you going, where did you come, my gloves are missing, I can't find them, look to them, they were here last night. We survived only maybe one or two other copies, 